Okay, so welcome to the second video in which we are looking at the voltage clamp. Okay, so so far what we have seen is that uh, we've create, taken these two electrodes, one which we put into the squid giant axon and therefore has the same electrical potential as the electrical potential of the axoplasm of the squid giant axon, and then one which is in the extracellular fluid which we have grounded basically, so it's at zero volts. Okay, so what we've then done is we've attached them into uh, the positive and the negative uh, sockets of an electrical differential amplifier and in this case it's not amplifying at all, it's just uh, the ratio is basically 1. More generally, an amplifier would uh, make the electrical potential different, electrical potential rather, of this output wire a constant times this electrical potential difference between the um, positive uh, and the negative inputs. Uh, whereas we're just assuming that this constant is 1, so it's not amplifying it, basically. Right, now what we do is, well, actually, firstly, let's just think about what this is. Well, this is going, the electrical potential of this output wire is going to be the electrical potential of this uh, wire going into the positive socket, subtract the electrical potential of this wire going into the negative socket. Now, we are assuming the extra set of the fluid is always 0 volts, basically, it's grounded, so this one is equal to zero, so E plus is just going to be the electrical potential of the intracellular compartment, so the, the overall potential of this output wire is just equal to the electrical potential of the um, intracellular compartment. Okay, so now uh, let's connect this wire up further, we're going to get to see the rest of this voltage clamp. So we bring this wire that's at the electrical potential um, of the electrical potential difference across this membrane, and now what we do is uh, we put it into um, we put it into another electrical amplifier, basically, like so. So this time we'll have another electrical amplifier here, but again it's not going to actually amplify the electrical potential, it's just going to take the electrical potential difference, basically. Okay, and this one will be the negative feed, and into the positive feed, we will connect a wire which has the electrical potential uh, that we want the intracellular compartment to be, basically. So I will call that the electrical potential desired for intracellular, basically. And it won't just have the electrical potential of uh, the desired intracellular com elect compartment electrical potential, it will have that times 2, basically. And you'll see exactly why this is going to work. What we will then do is connect this back to the squid giant axon. So here we come, and we're going to connect back in to the squid giant axon and have an electrode there. Okay, so why is this going to work? Well, firstly, let's think about what the electrical potential of this output wire of this electrical uh, differential amplifier is here. Well, it's going to be the electrical potential of this positive uh, input, subtract the electrical potential of this negative input. So the electrical potential of the positive input is two times the electrical potential that we desire the intracellular compartment to be. So di subtract the electrical potential that the intracellular compartment actually is. Now, first question. Think about what's going to happen if the electrical potential in the intracellular compartment is exactly what we want it to be. So if the electrical potential in the intracellular compartment, so if EI, the electrical potential of the intracellular compartment, is actually equal to the electrical potential that we desire the intracellular compartment to have, uh, then uh, basically this electrode here is going to have the same electrical potential as the desired uh, intracellular potential. Then what's going to happen, because we're always viewing the extracellular fluid as having the same grounded electrical potential, it gets more complicated if you don't assume that, but the setup still works perfectly if the um, uh, electrical potential of the extracellular fluid isn't that. Um, but we're, to make it simpler, we're assuming it is zero. Therefore, this wire here has electrical potential equal to the electrical potential in the intracellular compartment. Now, if that electrical potential in the intracellular compartment is the electrical potential of the desired uh, intracellular uh, compartment, uh, then what we will do when we put it through this next electrical amplifier 
is that we will find that the output wire has the electrical potential of two times the desired input, subtract this uh, actual electrical potential uh, of the intracellular compartment. And if that's actually the desired um, electrical potential of the intracellular compartment, then what we'll end up with is that this reduces down to just being equal to the electrical potential um, of the um, intracellular compartment that we desire. Okay, so now think about what that means. This electrode will have this desired electrical potential, but we also know that the intracellular compartment actually does have that desired electrical potential. So both the electrical potential of the actual intracellular compartment and the electrical potential of this amplifier are going uh, of this electrode rather are going to be equal to each other. So there's going to be no no electrical potential difference between this electrode and the axoplasm, so there's going to be no movement of current. So if the electrical potential in the axoplasm is the same as the desired electrical potential, then this setup will ensure that you are at equilibrium, that you do not change anything. Now, let's think about what happens if your electrical potential here is not um, not the desired electrical potential. And I think to best illustrate this, we should do some actual examples, put some actual numbers in. It gets very, very difficult to do this if you just try and keep the arguments general with these uh, symbols. So let's do some actual examples and see that it works again and again and again. Right, okay, so let's say that the electrical potential we desire the intracellular compartment to be is, what should we say? Should we say negative 70 millivolts, okay? Uh, so, now let's say that the electrical potential that the intracellular compartment actually is, is negative 50 millivolts. Okay, so let's try what, let's have a look at what this sit setup will do if that's the case, and how it will basically ensure that the electrical potential of the intracellular compartment is going to be moved down to negative 70 millivolts. Right, okay, so the electrical potential of the intracellular compartment is negative 50 millivolts. The electrical potential of the extracellular compartment we are assuming is fixed at zero volts. Right, or zero millivolts if you like. Uh, so now the electrical potential difference between these two uh, positive and negative inputs to this electrical differential amplifier is going to be, uh, again, just the electrical potential of the intracellular compartment. It's always going to be that because we're always assuming this electrical potential for the extra so the compartment is zero. Okay, so this wire coming out here has the same electrical potential as the axoplasm, i.e. negative 50 millivolts. Now we stick it through this differential amplifier here, and basically now what we do is uh, this positive input is going to have electrical potential two times the desired electrical potential. Now, the desired electrical potential is negative 70 millivolts, so it will therefore have electrical potential negative 140. So, if when we want to work out what the electrical potential of this output wire is going to be, it's going to be negative 140, which is two times the desired electrical potential of the intracellular compartment, and then subtract off the electrical potential of the intracellular compartment, which is negative uh, 50. Okay, so we get now that this electrical potential of this wire is going to be uh, negative 90 millivolts, basically. Okay, right. So, this electrode being stuck in the axoplasm up here is going to have an electrical potential of negative 90 millivolts. Now, the axoplasm has an electrical potential of negative 50 millivolts. So, What's going to happen, basically? This electrode is more negative than the axoplasm. So, the positively charged ions in the axoplasm are going to go towards that electrode because that electrode is more negative than the axoplasm and positive is attracted to negative. So, the positive ions, for instance, the potassium ions in this um, cytoplasm or axoplasm are going to go towards that electrode and what's going to happen when they get to, to that electrode they're going to receive electrons from it basically so electrons are going to come out of the electrode and go onto the potassium ions basically so what is basically going to happen is that you're giving electrons to the axoplasm from this electrode now if you give electrons to the axoplasm 
then the axoplasm is going to become more negatively charged, i.e. its electrical potential is going to go down. So its electrical potential is going to continuously go down, so it's going to go get more negative, i.e. it's going to approach negative 70 millivolts. Now, as it gets more and more negative, as it gets closer and closer to the desired electrical potential, um, um, the desired electrical potential um, for the intracellular compartment, then what's going to happen is all of this is going to gradually change because as, it, as this gets more negative, this also gets more negative here. And this electrical uh, potential of this wire is going to approach also being negative 70 millivolts. So it's going to also approach being negative 70 millivolts as basically this approach is being negative 70. So if you make this negative 70, it's obviously going to go to uh, this calculation is going to go to negative 17 millivolts as well. So it's going to approach the point at which it gets to an equilibrium. And then finally, once you get to negative 70 millivolts, then um, the axoplasm will have electrical potential negative 70 millivolts, and this wire will have electrical potential negative 70 millivolts, so there'll be an equilibrium, and then this wire will stop giving electrons. So it's going to basically drive the axoplasm's electrical potential to this desired electrical potential of negative 70 millivolts. And I advise you to do more examples, do more of thinking through this and trying to understand basically uh, why, uh, why this is always going to work. So it's always going to give you uh, the electrical potential that in the interest of the compartment that you uh, put in as your desired electrical potential basically. Okay, so I think uh, the only critical other example to do is basically to look at the um, look at the case where the, this electrical potential of this electrode is going to be lower than the electrical potential of um, well it's going to be higher sorry than the electrical potential of the axoplasm but we'll do that in the next video